All right, hello boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it's your buddy Mr. G, and today we are going to make duo tone images and digital photography with the portrait pictures that we took. I've got a picture here of a young lady, this model here that I have, and we're going to use her for our example of how we're going to do this. First thing we got to do is remove them from their background to put them on a blank canvas here. So we are going to go ahead and select her, and I went ahead and selected her, and I used my quick selection tool. And then I had to do a little bit of refining over here on her hand, which is cleaning up with my lasso tool, but nothing really special about that. We're just going to select your person out from your background and do a careful selection so you have your figure selected. You could select the white and then invert it, or you could select the figure. Either one, depending on your image, is going to depend how you are going to uh, select it and use the best selection tool for whatever your visual analyzation of your image tells you, okay? So once you have your selection of your image, I'm going to head and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it into a new image. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to new and I'm going to call this file a duotone. And let's just make this a eight by ten. I'm going to make an eight by ten image, 300 DPI. Background is white. That'll be just fine. I'll go ahead and create that. Now I'm going to go back over here to my model. I'm going to hit Command C so that I can copy that selection. And I'm going to go back to my new one and I'm going to hit Command V. And I'm going to paste my model in there. As soon as I have my model in there, I'm going to go ahead and get my move tool by pressing V. Make sure you have your auto select, auto transform controls all selected there. So you have your handles and your bounding box so you can easily resize this. Now, I don't want to distort her, so I am going to hold down Shift. And I am going to go ahead and size her up to where I want my picture to be. I'm going to put her off like this and drag up. And it's kind of up to you to frame it however you'd like to in the new image. I'm going to put her just about like that. Rotate her just so I can get that arm a little bit. like that. And I'll push return to go ahead and commit that or hit your check mark up there. So there is my image that I want to work with. Okay. So first thing I want to do, super easy here. I'm just going to go here and make sure I have my new layer selected. And then I'm going to go down here to my adjustment layer. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. Okay. And I'm going to add a gradient map. Okay. Now, when I add an adjustment layer, it automatically makes a layer that has a mask tied to it, and it does various things depending on which adjustment layer you do. In this case, we're going to add a gradient layer. Okay. The default it says set to a gray layer, so if you see if I turn that off, it goes over, but it just affects the layers that are underneath it. Okay. So this gradient is being applied, and what it is doing, it is affecting the color underneath it. So I've got a black and white here and I've got some other ones you can see and there's some um, different ones. Some are going to work better than others. Okay. But you can see that it's going to do different things. Okay. So let's say I like that one there. Okay. I'll just use anyone here. Actually, this first one here, what it's selecting is it's your foreground and background color. And you can edit that. You can click the actual gradient bar there and you'll get an editor. So if you want to change it, let's change this to uh, let's do like a kind of dark purple color like that. And I'll push OK. And let's take our other color. And I like to use colors other than white and black. It's kind of fun to play with the other colors. So I'm going to play with this color here. Okay. So that's going to represent your whites. So your darks are going to be this dark kind of uh, royal blue here. And my lights are going to be this kind of teal blue green here. So we'll do that. Okay. So that's very cool. Okay. So that's a cool effect. So now what I want to do, I want to ask, ask this so it's only acting on my figure and not on the background so that I can change that background color. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK to commit this. All right. So again, you see if I turn that off, that screen is going over top of the whole thing. We have that right there. So what I want to do, I want to turn this off just so you can see. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to select 
my figure. Okay, now I don't have to go through the process of going ahead and selecting her again because I've already went through the process of cutting her out and pasting her in. So she is the only thing on that layer. Since she is the only thing on that layer, I can go ahead and click select pixels by right clicking on the actual thumbnail. Okay, I'm selecting and right clicking on the thumbnail, not in the empty layer on the layer name. If I double click on the layer name, it's going to change the name. If I double click on the layer empty space here, it's going to bring up the layer options. I want to double click or right click rather on the thumbnail that'll allow me to select select pixels and it'll select all the pixels in here, which are just her because she's the only thing in that image. All right. Now with that selection made, I can even turn her off and I'm going to go up here. I'm going to click on the mask layer. Okay. Here's the gradient layer and here's the mask that's tied. I'm going to click on that mask layer. Okay, and I'm going to invert that selection because I want to fill in black to mask out everything behind her. So I'm going to go to select, I'm going to go to invert, and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to get black as my foreground color. If you're not, you can just double click your color layer and make sure you have pure black. I will get my paint bucket tool and I'm just going to pour black into there. And now you'll see that that is there. It looks like nothing happened. But when you turn it back on, you'll see that I have her all cut out. So I can go ahead and hit Command D at this point. And now I can do something fun with the background. So she's a nice kind of blue. So I'm going to do the complement to blue on the color wheel is orange. So I'm going to put an orange in here. So let's put an orange gradient. Um, that's kind of good. This kind of sherberty tangerine color up here. Wow, come on. Come on, give me my color. My color won't change. Oh, it's because I'm on the layer mask up there. That's why I'm not seeing it. I was like, good gravy, why can't I see my color? Got to make sure you're on the right layer, Mr. G. And I'm going to go for a white over here. And we're going to push OK. So they have a kind of sherbet orange to a white. And I'm going to use my gradient tool. And I'm just going to drop a gradient in behind here. I grab my gradient tool. And I'm just going to click this top to bottom. Command Z. I want to be on the right layer. I'm going to put this on the background. Top to bottom. Like that. And there I am done. So that is just that simple. That is all we need to do this week. You're just going to do three of these images. It's up to you to choose the colors, the gradients, and how you want to balance everything out. But you basically isolate the image, add a gradient overlay layer, and then you're going to mask it and change the background. Bip, bop, boop, that's it. Okay. You're going to do two of those this week. Uh, if you have any questions, send me an email. Do good work, and I will see you in class.